Neocon Nikki Haley got a big ego boost over the weekend when she achieved her first and probably her only victory over Donald Trump in the primary race in Washington, D.C., the District of Criminals. And while not being a state, it is its own district, and so they have their own primary, and she did beat him, which just proves who the swamp prefers to be the Republican nominee. And this is how little it actually matters. This is with 99% of the tally totaled. So she got about 1,300 votes total in the entire district, the majority of which, of course, were Democrats. So she's using this complete meaningless victory to try to keep up the facade that she has a chance to beat Donald Trump for the nomination. But tomorrow on Super Tuesday, she will be, once again, a laughingstock across the entire country once those results are in. And her flip-flopping continues. Breaking moments ago, Nikki Haley just told Kristen Welker on Meet the Press that she no longer feels bound by the RNC pledge to make, to make that she made to endorse the winner of the Republican presidential primary, meaning she might not endorse Donald Trump. This clown, by the way, is Michael Steele, who was the Republican diversity hire as the chairman of the RNC years ago who now works for MSNBC and attacks Republicans with every breath, which is just another reason why you should never hire DEI. Have you taken the prospect, the possibility of endorsing him off the table at this point? It's not anything I think about. What I have but said- But is it is off the table, Ambassador? It sounds like you are in a different place. Are people misinterpreting what you're saying? Have you moved to a place where you're no longer planning to endorse him? Well, I think, first of all, you're, if you talk about an endorsement, you're talking about a loss. Yes, because you did lose. <laughs> and every day, you continue to be a bigger loser. At this point, we don't want your endorsement. We just want you to go away. I think people want a new generational leader that is going to go back to what the American dream is, what we want for our kids in a place that's something that we can be proud of again. And that's not going to be you. So go away. Let me try it this way. You did sign a pledge, an RNC pledge, yeah. to support the eventual nominee. Do you still feel bound by that pledge? I have always said that I have serious concerns about Donald Trump. I have even more concerns about Joe Biden. So is that a no? Are you bound by the RNC pledge? I, the RNC pledge, I mean, at the time of the debate, we had to take it to where would you support the nominee? And you had to, in order to get on that debate stage, you said yes. So she lied in order to get onto the debate stage. And obviously she has no intention of endorsing Donald Trump ever. And we don't want your endorsement. The RNC is now not the same RNC. Now it's So you're no Trump's longer bound by that pledge? No, I think I'll make what decision I want to make, but that's not something I'm thinking about. Nikki Haley is the Bud Light of Republicans. Actually, I guess she's never really technically been a Republican. She's always been a rhino, but you get the point. And the Bud Light boycott cost Anheuser-Busch over a billion dollars in lost sales now. It has been tallied actually well over a billion, almost one and a half billion to be exact. And now even Democrats are admitting the obvious about her campaign. Do you think that it is time for Nikki Haley to drop out of the race? And, and do Democrats want the general election well, to begin in earnest? Well, I, I don't know why Democrats would want her out of the race. She's one of our better surrogates. I mean, she's defining the opposition to Trump incredibly effectively. I mean, she's making points I'm applauding every single day about his temperament, his capacity, uh, his you know, unraveling in real time. Uh, and so I think it's I think she's been incredibly effective. So I hope she stays in personally. Uh, but look, at the end of the day, it's Trump. It is Trump. But it may ultimately be Trump versus Gavin Newsom because things are going to start to get really crazy here really soon. And so to keep the mentally enslaved masses occupied and pacified, the liberal media industrial complex is churning out stories by the hour about America's new royal couple, Taylor Swift and whatever her boyfriend's name is. And here is his idiotic answer as to why the media is so obsessed with them. Hey, Travis, Amy Hello. with the Los Angeles Times. Um, the paper sent me here just to cover you and Taylor. Uh, <laughs> okay. Obviously, you know, uh, everyone is so captivated with your relationship. Some people have likened you to the American Royals because you're a football <laughs> player. She's a pop star. Why do you think everyone's so fascinated with you two? Um, I think uh, the values that we stand for and just, uh, you know, who we are as people. We, uh, we love to uh, shine light on others, shine light around the people that, that, that help and support us. 
Um, and on top of that, we just I, I feel like we both have a, just a love for life. They're just such amazing people. <laughs> They're like the reincarnation of Jesus. They're so much better than us that the media is just fascinated with them. Now, if this guy had an ounce of integrity whatsoever, he would have responded by pointing out that the media manufactures a fake royal couple every few years to fixate on, to feed the dumbed-down masses who live vicariously through their celebrity gods. In the 90s, it was Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman. Then in the 2000s, it was Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie. Then the Kardashians were anointed as the American royal family, and that pretty much signified the pending collapse of the American culture and the American empire. But there are some good signs. Donald Trump may very well win the 2024 election. In fact, he is leading old Joe in seven swing states. And finally, people are standing up against DEI, America First Legal Foundation, headed up by Stephen Miller, is filing lawsuits left and right. And the University of Florida just terminated all DEI positions. 13 full-time positions were terminated and 15 administrative appointments were ended for faculty members. Imagine having a group of almost 30 people whose entire job is to discriminate against white people and try to gay up a school. Earlier this year, Florida's Board of Education announced a new rule banning public colleges from using federal funds for DEI programs, activities, and policies. The University of Florida said terminating the DEI positions is to comply with the Florida Board of Governors regulation on prohibited expenditures. And after being utterly humiliated with all of the DEI AI images that Google's Gemini created, they shut it down, at least temporarily while they try to retool it. But Joy Reid, the angry black woman on MSNBC who's making millions of dollars a year, who has culturally appropriating white European hair, is upset that she's not getting any reparations. And to find out that literally Barack Obama's two terms in pre as president are your reparations, <laughs> and Juneteenth, which you already celebrated anyway, is your reparations, and yet you built this country. You literally physically built this country, and yet the attitude toward you from a lot of your peers and your fellow citizens is just shut up <laughs> yes. and be grateful. Yes. Please do. We're definitely tired of hearing about it. And we've more than compensated with countless billions or probably trillions of dollars at this point in welfare benefits and other social programs. And there's a saying that strength comes from the struggle. And Normal people, when they face adversity, they use that as a source of strength. And oftentimes it's because of that adversity that they're able to propel themselves and actually achieve tremendous things in life that they wouldn't have been able to achieve without facing those struggles. While other people just continue to look in the rearview mirror and complain about what happened 150 years ago. If you enjoy watching my videos, you're really gonna love reading my books. So order The War on Conservatives in paperback from Amazon.com or download the ebook from any of the major ebook stores. And of course, there's a link to the Amazon listing in the description below. So click it and head on over there and check it out. <laughs>